What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you a fantastic video today. We are playing Lord of the Rings Rise to War and in today's video we are doing the Commander Spotlight for Saruman. Saruman is a baller tier 3 commander on the evil faction side and I've put together two builds for you to look at and consider in your life today. So, Saruman likes and subscribes to my channel, so should you. His eye watches me all day long. Into the video, let's rock and roll ladies and gents. First off, Saruman is a tier 3 commander. Like I said, he's for the evil factions. He is a balanced commander, which means he gains 25 to all stats and 2 additional skill points. Those skill points are very important because you need the skill points to be good with Saruman. Into this particular build, I did a 2 attacks against the same exact 260 power tile and army with 2 totally different builds. We're going to walk through both today and give you my recommendations. First things first, I personally feel the strongest army for this guy are going to be a mixture of Reapers and Fallen. Unfortunately, I do not have Fallen at this time as uh, the server I'm in does not have Angmar, but next season I plan on trying the Sauron build with the Fallen units. If you have unlocked Fallen, they are probably best in slot unit for Sauron, okay? Into the build, let's rock and roll this first build. I'm running full cavalry here. Uh, I am running the Easterling Spear, <clears throat> which is going to give me bonus damage to my mounted units. I'm running the Drums of Moria, which is going to give my mounted units more speed and attack. And as far as the skills, I am running the Respect 5 Talent Sharky, which is going to give my units plus 30% damage dealt. I am also running the Respect 3 Voice of Saruman, which is going to be a 30% chance against all enemies every round to be inflicted by madness. I have my additional points in Astonish. At level 50, respect level 7, you can have Astonish maxed out, okay? Which will be a 50% chance of stunning the enemy commander. Could be very useful against commanders like Legolas or Lurtz. Alright, and then the third and final thing that I put points in is the Palantir Scryer. This is a respect 1 talent tree. This is going to give my units a minus 51.5% at my current focus level of 315. Minus 51.5% damage taken for 2 attacks. Uh, and it's going to have a 15% chance of afflicting madness to Saruman himself, alright? And then one of the most important skills for this build are the Tier 1 Fanaticism. It's the off-branch from the Palantir Scryer. Fanaticism is going to give all my melee units plus 5 damage each round, okay? So, round 1, they're dealing 30% plus 5% for 35% total damage dealt. Uh, bonus. And then at round 5, you're looking at a total of 55% increased damage dealt. Clearly, later in the fight, they're gonna, all my units will be much stronger. Which is why uh, Reapers, which gain 70% damage increased after round 5, and then the Fallen, which gain up to 60% increased damage dealt, basically as the fight progresses and they take damage and deal damage, um, those will pair very well with Fanaticism, okay? Round 5 and 6 for the Fallen Reaper build will be astronomically big nukes. Alright, so into how this build performed. I was fighting against a level 45 Boromir 260 tile. Uh, he had clearly some decent skills in here. Warden, which is going to avoid some damage. Okay, Air, which is going to give them plus defense every round. So he's very resistant to physical damage. The fact that I'm dealing entirely physical damage here, he's got Swan Knights and he gains 7 defense each round. They already gained plus 100 defense for the first three rounds. These guys are basically anti my build. If you could be any more anti the build I'm running right now, uh, it would have to be Oathbreakers, which are immune to physical damage. The only other unit that's more anti my build than Swan Knights, okay? As far as how the build performed, well, it performed quite well. I did a total of 211,000 damage. I received less damage than I dealt. I was able to inflict madness several times on the enemy Swan Knights in the battle. And we're going to just jump to round 3 real quick so I can show you that as it plays out. I don't want you to watch this whole combat report, but here in round 3 we'll walk through how it works out. Here's Boromir giving them plus 21 defense. They now have 192 defense because they have the plus 100% defense from their other buff, okay? Here you can see round 3, 3 stacks of fanaticism, 15% damage. That's a total of 45% damage dealt if you include Sharky in there. Decent nuke on the Swan Knights with their 192 defense. <laughs> 10,900 damage against Swan Knights with 192 defense is pretty good. Okay. Here's Palantir Scryer. 
I did not get hit by madness. Very nice. My raider and my dragoons got damage bonuses. Uh, I did not proc astonish on Boromir with the 7% stun there. Okay, and here is the Palantir Squire's damage reduction. 51.5% reduced damage received for the next two attacks. Very nice. Okay, so that is how that played out. You can see those skills in action there. All in all, did quite well against this army that hard counters my army, okay? The next battle report we're going to look at today is another attack against the same exact build. Uh, same exact Boromir tile. Same exact 3,750 Swan Knights, okay? In this particular build, I ran full tank units, which are my Dragoons, and I went pure focus damage dealt from Saruman. I went pure damage nukes, okay? How did that play out? Well, I did 65,000 damage compared to 15,000 damage in the first build. So I gained 50,000 damage from Saruman with my focus damage nuke build. My soldier damage went from 211 down to 88. So I lost over 100,000 damage dealt, about 132,000 damage dealt. For my soldiers, and I gained 50,000 damage dealt from my commander. Overall, I lost over 70,000 damage output in this build. Okay? Because of that, uh, I did not fare as well. Alright? How does that skill point breakout look? Well, I've maxed out the rank 1 and the rank 3 talents. I've got of many colors, which is basically 98% focus, 98% burn, and 98% poison damage uh, on a 2 round cooldown. Affected by my, my, my focus stat. I This was kind of disappointing. I was seeing it do like, you know, between four to 6,000 damage nukes each tick. Uh, so, you know, 12,000 12, damage in the round. Uh, not terrible, but not worth all these points. Trembling Strike attacks two enemies. It does 94% focus damage to each on a one-round cooldown. And then we have Focus Discharge, which is activated on a five round cooldown in round six so it really only triggers once in the fight it's going to do nukes against three different enemies and reduce their damage dealt by 500 percent for the next round okay now granted i only fought one target and three of my skills do splash damage so if you're fighting an enemy with three units you could see your damage output increase uh from the 65,000 damage range to maybe 80 to 85,000 damage I do not see Saruman going over 100,000 focus damage dealt at level 50, respect level 25, wherever you're at. I don't see him going over 100,000 damage dealt, okay? As far as the troops, obviously they suffered, okay? So, uh, build compared to build, I would go with the full cavalry build. Seemed to perform much better. I also, for uh, Shiz and Giggles, I did an Alchemist build to see how that fared. And actually did pretty well... <laughs> <laughs> it did pretty well, uh, the Alchemist build here. Um, but I don't think that... <sighs> it's tough to decide if I like it, because Alchemists themselves just have an enormous damage output. I don't know if I like the Alchemist build for the Alchemist build, okay? Does it do enough damage to warrant taking this many losses? That's the question. I'm taking enormously greater losses to run this build than I am with the full cavalry build, and it's not doing enough damage to make it make sense. All right, uh, but I'll walk you through that real quick in case you decide you want to try this build out. This is basically focusing on the Respect 5 talent tree, which is very Urukai centered I've got Sharky, 30% damage. Morgul Commander for 14% reduced damage taken. Urukai Captain, which is going to give me the, some heals, which is where you saw that 4,000 healing done. I have a few points in my CC ability, but I don't have enough to max it out. Then I have Palantir Scryer, and I have Fanaticism to give myself bonus damage dealt, okay? So, for example, in round 5, I should be dealing 55% bonus damage dealt by my Alchemists. Let's see how that plays out. Round 5. Let's get to the Alchemists. The Alchemists in round 5, plus 25% damage dealt. There is 2,000 Alchemists alive at this point in the fight. 2,000 Alchemists did 10,794 burn damage. They did not proc the heal. Do I think that's bad? No. Do I think it's better than the full cavalry build that took less losses and did a little bit less damage? I'm going to go with the cavalry build, okay? Fallen, again, will be even stronger than the Dragoon Raider combo I just showed you. So I think Drag uh, Fallen will surpass the Alchemists. 
And to get the Alchemists in the Saruman build, you have to be Respect 5. You cannot run Alchemists and not be Respect 5. There's no point. Okay? So if you are Respect 5 and you want to play around with Alchemists, it is a not a terrible build. It just isn't quite as good as uh, or as sustainable as the Cavalry build. Okay? So that's it. Give me the like and sub. I love you guys a long time. Here is Saruman's animation. I would say if you're comparing Saruman to Sauron, I would give Saruman a 5% advantage over Sauron. I would not say he's massively stronger. He has a little bit less CC, a little bit better army bonuses, uh, about the same focus damage nukes if you go that route. So all in all, Saruman, there he is. Give me the like and sub. I love you guys a long time. Randy out.